Hi everyone. We are Solar Education Project, a nonprofit that works locally and internationally to share a fuel-free, zero-emission cooking technology called Solar Cooking. Jennifer Gasser and Mary Buchenek are co-founders of Solar Education Project, and today they're going to show you step-by-step -step how to make a solar cooker that uses the sun's energy to cook food. This cooker is a reflective panel cooker that we've nicknamed The Beast. It's based on an original Copenhagen oven design by Sharon Clausen. Here's a list of materials you'll need to make this oven. You can make it along with us by pausing the instructional video after each step. Now you might be wondering what kinds of foods can you cook in The Beast? Well, just take a look. Pretty much anything you can bake or roast in a regular oven, you can also make in The Beast. But how on earth can you cook with sunshine? Well, it's all about our amazing sun. The sun is 93 million miles from Earth, but its energy fuels all the life on our planet. It's like a giant nuclear reactor fusing hydrogen into helium and releasing an incredible amount of energy into space. More energy strikes Earth in one hour than the total amount of energy used by humans in one year. In fact, an hour of sunlight could power 120 trillion 60 watt light bulbs. So of course there's enough energy and sunlight to cook food. We just have to figure out how to collect it and how to use it. So in the video, Mary will walk you through how to make the beast and she'll help you understand how solar cooking works by using the DARE method. And then it's up to you to cook with it at home or at school, or maybe use it to design fun science experiments or engineering design challenges. And please share your knowledge with others. Now the Beast is just one of many designs. For more ideas and patterns, visit our website, gdsnonprofit.org and click on Solar Education Project. Now watch the video and then work together to make your very own solar cooker. Have 28 inches and we want it to be 22 inches, we need to cut off six inches. So I've got my ruler here. I'm gonna measure six inches from the end, make a mark, move it up. Six inches from the end, make a mark. And then just take a straight edge, anything that's gonna help you draw a straight line and connect those two marks. And now you've got a cutting line and you can cut this strip off and you'll be left with the 22 inch square. Welcome to Solar Education Project's Makerspace. Today we're going to show you step-by-step -step directions for making this large Copenhagen oven that we've nicknamed The Beast. Okay, the first step is to prepare our poster boards and we're gonna have four sheets of poster board and each one needs to be 22 by 22 inch square. Because standard poster board is 28 by 22, we're gonna to have to trim off six inches of poster board. Let me show you how we do that. We're going to use our ruler and from the edge, measure in six inches, make a mark. Move it down a bit, do the same thing. Measure in six inches, make a mark. And then you just need a straight edge, anything with a straight edge to help you draw a straight line. And we're going to connect those two marks. And then we simply take the scissors and we trim off this excess six inch strip and we'll be left with a 22 by 22 inch square. Okay, now we have to choose a reflective material to glue or apply to each of the four pieces of poster board that we've prepared. So where do you get that reflective material? Where well, you have some choices. Um, this is um, a self-stick vinyl that you can get at sign shops and craft stores. 
but it's a little bit expensive. So if you don't want to spend a lot of money making your oven, you could also purchase aluminum foil. And just remember that there's a dull side to the foil and there's a more shiny side and this is the side that you want to use. A very inexpensive um, choice is to upcycle materials that might go into the trash. If you've ever looked on the inside of snack bags, you'll see that some of them have a, a wonderful reflective interior that can also be used to cover your panels. So the trick is now to just get those glued down and I'll show you how we do that. Okay, let's take this one and we've got some glue. You can either use regular white glue um, or wood glue with a few drops of water. And I've got a sponge um, brush that I'm gonna use to apply it to my poster board. And if I'm applying the snack bags, the wood glue seems to be a little uh, more sturdy. So don't worry about getting it perfectly on the edge. You can trim those. Okay, we'll do the same thing with our piece of aluminum foil. Just paint it on. Shiny side up. Smooth it out. And the last option was the reflective vinyl, which is self-stick. So, get this opened. And you peel this off. And this will stick right to, to your poster board. Okay, so we've foiled all four of our panels. And then the next step is to turn the panel over. And we're going to um, create the base of our panel oven where the cooking pot will rest. To do that, I'm going to choose a corner. And I'm going to measure from the corner down seven and a half inches. I'll do that on that side, and then I'll do it again on this side. Okay, now I take my ruler and I connect those two marks. And this is where I'm going to now turn over and fold inward and make a nice crease and this is going to be one part of the base. Do that to the other three panels. You can see once we've brought those four corners together, it forms a square that when I flip this over will be the base of, uh, of your cooking oven. And that's where your pot will sit. So there are different ways to join this together. Uh, one way that I do sometimes is to um, take the scraps that I had and make a square that fits that shape. And then I glue and attach the square, and then that acts as kind of a, a paper tape to hold them together. And you have to let that dry for a while. But what we're going to do today is to simply attach it using duct tape, and that's also acceptable. So we're going to take a piece of duct tape, and we're going to connect from one end to the other and then do the same thing across, connecting from one end to the other. And now your four pieces are joined and we'll be able to flip this over and bring it up into that cone shape so that we can cook. I like to do this, I like to mark one of them as the back or the rear panel. And now I'm gonna take my clips and just show you how easily this clips together to start forming a nice cone shape that will be reflecting light into your cooking space. And you do the same thing for the other panels. To better understand how solar cooking works, we use uh, what we call the DARE method. And the word DARE, uh, D-A-R-E, represents four concepts that are important to solar cooking. Let's start with the D. The D is direct and you can see We've uh, added all this reflective material so that we can capture extra sunlight and direct it into the cooking space. The A in DARE is absorb. And you notice that we have black cookware that we use in solar cooking. 
The color black absorbs all the wavelengths of visible light and converts it to heat energy. And it's that heat energy that then cooks the food inside the cooking pans. The R in DARE is retain, because once you've got that heat, you have to find a way to keep it trapped in your cooking space. And there are a number of ways to do that. You can use a reusable oven bag, place your pan in the oven bag, close it up, and that will retain the heat. Or you can use um, Pyrex bowls, inverted, place your cooking pan inside the bowl, and another one on top, and that also retains the heat. And another way is to use a polycarbonate sleeve in the shape of the pan that you slide the pan down into and that retains the heat as well as the lid on top and this is a really good setup we're outside and i'm going to talk just for a minute about how you align your copenhagen to the sun okay this is the rear panel you face that directly to the sun if the sun is high in the sky you bring all the panels up to form a nice cone shape and get as much reflectivity as you can into the cooking space but this afternoon we're working with a low sun so i'm going to lower these panels the front panels otherwise they're going to be creating you can see they were creating a shadow on the pot so I can lower them pretty much all the way down and that allows the Sun to hit the pot directly and also receive the reflection from the the panel surrounding it on the sides in the back congratulations by making your first solar oven you've joined a worldwide network of people that solar cook every day Solar ovens are used for more than cooking. The Copenhagen Reflective Panel Oven is used for student research at a local university. The engineering students are problem solvers. They found a solution that kept the large Copenhagen panels together, yet were easily opened for concentrating the sun's rays into the cook space. Denise hopes to improve health issues related to cooking over the open fire. Thanks to the Copenhagen's portability, she's able to easily cook near the marketplace and saves money not buying charcoal. This student exchange program between the United States and Pakistan created an engineering design challenge using the Copenhagen oven. Students learned about the environmental impacts and how to pasteurize water. Now it's your turn. Use your knowledge of the DARE method and solar cooking environmental impacts to help your community. Be a solar cooking ambassador. In addition to cooking, imagine, plan, create, test, and improve the Copenhagen solar oven. Thank you for joining us today for our Makerspace where we made the Copenhagen Beast. Um, if you're interested in this oven, uh, please know that it doesn't have to be this big. The original Copenhagen by Sharon Claussen has 15 inch panels and we've also made a kids version with 11 inch panels. Each one is perfectly functional and able to cook food. We have these and many other designs that you can access at our website gdsnonprofit.org and click on Solar Education Project. And happy solar cooking. Bye bye.